to open the chat as well, so to keep an eye um, on that. Okay. I just want to make sure that I can also see the presentation as we go along. Great. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, okay, so hello everybody and thank you to Bethany for that introduction. So as she said, we will be discussing conscious living, consumerism and how everything ties into the environment. Um, next slide, please, Beth. So just a little bit about me. I am Amy Cherry Hughes. Um, I am born and raised in Wandsworth and um, for the past three years now, three to four years, I have um, been in the environmental sector. However, before that, I was actually working in the fashion industry. Um, so the, when I left the fashion industry and came into the environmental sector, the, the first trigger of that was through Refill Wandsworth. And actually, we have an event on Thursday evening at the same time at 6.30. So if you're interested in refill and reuse, do come along to that event as well. It will be actually as a video recording as opposed to a presentation. So slightly different. Um, and as Bethany said, I also co-authored a book which came out in paperback this summer. Um, and a lot of the presentation tonight is also based on my learning from the book. And as I said, I used to be working in the fashion industry and since the past three to four years, everything is changing and I'm still also learning and learning how um, my career can develop in this industry. Um, and talking about my career, I'm currently on a Princess Trust Young Persons Enterprise course. So it's a course running for two years for people under 30 and you get mentorship and business training. So that's what I've been doing during the whole pandemic as well. Um, so it's been keeping me rather busy publishing a book and trying to start my own business. Um, so I've just branched out to um, be a sustainability consultant. Um, and I work with small businesses and entrepreneurs, um, a lot also um, people that I meet through the Princess Trust. Um, and talking to young people and entrepreneurs, we look at their business and we see how it can be sustainable but also sustainable for them in terms of money wise as well. So small businesses want to do what they can, but how can they in terms of money wise? So that is something a little bit about me. Um, but just to finalize on that and also keep in mind during the presentation is that we don't have to do everything. We just need to do something. Okay, so next slide. Okay, so what can we do and what will we be uh, considering and also thinking about keeping in mind throughout the whole presentation? So conscious living, so everything we do has an impact on the earth and consumer power. How we spend and where we keep our money is extremely powerful. And then consumerism, what are, oh, what are we consuming and what are we consuming consciously? Okay, next slide. Okay, and also what I said to Bethany just before we started is I've split them up now into a few different sections. So after each, each section, we can cover a few questions if there's any in the chat. Um, so we are not kind of coming back and then forgetting questions. So we'll be starting with um, buying new things and how we can make informed decisions when we are considering a new purchase. So when it comes to buying something, it could be food, it could be um, an item of clothing, something for our home. We can think about if the product is money well spent and thinking about where the product has come from and um, how it was made and how it came to being in our hands if it's a physical product. And just asking ourselves questions like um, who has grown it and has, this, has the uh, process of it uh, being produced, has it been produced with respect, with respect to the earth and respect to the people who have been in line in the production. And then also who grew it and who was involved and who dyed the product and who hand sewed it and has it been absolutely consciously thought out to be produced. And I was thinking about it earlier and it came it comes to me with like artists and um, people maybe who make something consciously, coming back to my sustainability consultancies that I do. Um, somebody may 
hand make an item, maybe it's a bakrame for your house decoration, but then looking at how they uh, source their products, they obviously use um, a cotton thread, but is it an organic cotton? And the farmers who have made that cotton, has it also been um, grown organically and have they been paid a fair price for their products? So I think lots of people um, start businesses and say, oh, they're a sustainable business or they make sustainable candles or whatever, but is it? And what is the background to that product? And that's what I really look at when I um, work with small businesses and entrepreneurs and we look at everything and have they also considered the background? And that comes back to, well, how do I know? And how do you know with any business? Well, lots of businesses, especially big businesses, will have a section on their website which will tell them, tell the consumer about their sustainability practices. Um, and it's really good to ask questions and research the brand, especially because brands, they um, sometimes fall under a bigger bar um, umbrella. And the brand you might be interested in could be ethical, but the brand that they are owned by could be extremely unethical. And that's where the money is, could be going to. Um, and if you're not happy, this is where we use our consumer power to write to the brand and explain to them what you're not happy with and explain that you might be boycotting it or taking to social media um, and ex explaining your um, worries or issues with their product or their brand or however they've delivered their service. Um, and then we're gonna move on now in a moment to second hand, which is the next slide. Because instead of buying new, we can also buy new old. And that's where second hand comes in. Um, next slide, please, Beth. So we go through what the benefits are of buying second hand. And those points are here on the screen on the left hand side. So you use your consumer power by not buying new. Um, you save items that potentially would land, end up in landfill or be um, incinerated, but potentially um, put on the street and left. It also reduces the demand. So companies make things because there is a demand and you probably heard, well, if there's no demand, there's no product. Um, so it kind of breaks that barrier of everything new all the time. It also promotes sustainability and some can say it saves you money as well. Um, not all the time. Sometimes I find, especially now, lots of online um, secondhand selling channels, which you're seeing on the right hand side, which I'm going to recommend in a moment. Um, lots of people want the same price for what they originally paid for things. And earlier when I was thinking about that and coming from the fashion industry, um, working in PR as well, we would send clothes samples to um, influencers or celebrities. And they are also getting so many different brands sending them so many clothes that they then sell online and earn more money. So they are kind of promoting this fast fashion culture, whether it's in fashion or homeware or physical products, where there's a PR department who's trying to sell something, um, they're creating this trend and this demand for more. So although it's secondhand, thinking about why is it secondhand and is it truly secondhand? Has this been loved before or has it been just push on a person and then move on to the next one? Um, and that goes back into what the buying new things and um, this whole trend of people constantly buying and influencers constantly pushing out the new latest product to then always think back and think, do I really need it or am I just following the fastest trends? Um, so second hand also promotes and saves on resources. So we are not by buying new all the time we are not relying on the earth's resources and it also extends the item the item's life um like the dress i'm wearing it's um, a new secondhand piece that i picked up off of the vintage app um yeah and i might do some tailoring to it myself as well because i don't like the sleeves um so there you go so i have extended the life and i'm extremely happy with it so that's always good um and that brings us um, no, actually, we've got another slide for second hand. To the next slide, all <laughs> I Oh, no, we're not actually. Go back, Bethany, sorry. <laughs> um, what does my... 
Okay, Ben said, where to buy secondhand? There we go. So where to buy? So a lot of these are um, online. So Depop, eBay, Vinted, um, Gumtree, uh, Facebook, everything's online. The middle box represents charity um, and donations. And charity and donations, I've experienced that a lot of people going back to this fast fashion of buying things all the time say, oh, it's fine, I'll donate to charity. It's all good, all well and good donating to charity, but we have to think about, do we buy back from the charity as well? Are we supporting it? Because um, I've experienced charities get um, bombarded with items, which actually then they can't shift. And that's no good that if everybody's pushing items on and we're not buying it because we're just too busy buying new. Um, so those are some great apps and websites to, um, to get involved in. So do take a note of those. Um, one of my favorite is Olio as well, um, which was a free share. And now you can also, if you like hand make things, you can also sell on there, but it's a great sharing app and it goes via your location. So it's usually towards your community, um, which also brings me to swapping, gifting, um, giving to friends, to your community, your unwanted items, basically hand-me-downs, um, as you would say. Um, but also the, an idea as well, if you want to get rid of things quickly and you don't want money for things, you can pop it outside, maybe on your garden wall with a note on and then take it in at the night time um, to not obviously be caught fly tipping. Um, but we wouldn't do that <laughs> anyway. But to bring it in with um, a note on as well and give away to community. And that kind of relieves that pressure on the charities because there ha I've watched TV shows where they've said that we are completely bombarded. Um, with items that people just don't want and they just completely carry on buying new things. Um, which brings us to the end of our section of buying new things. Um, so if there were any um, reactions or anything, um, which I don't think, oh, new miss. Oh yeah, too good to go. Too good to go, Diana, is actually gonna come up uh, later on in the uh, presentation. Um, and then Susie, can it be repaired? Is a question that could also be considered, I, oh, yeah, for mobile phones. Oh yeah, for mobile phones, especially as well, like uh, refurb uh, electric, electrical items. Yeah, and there's um, the re the repair cafe in Houston as well, um, which is a fantastic resource that we've got access to. <clears throat> and then we can go on to mm, the next one that you've had a sneak peek at, um, which is the finances. Um, finances, in my opinion is could be one of the easiest and the best things that we can do to um, help the environment and to improve our own carbon footprint um, and the reason because of this is what we're going to go for and um, go through um, and it includes like our bank accounts our savings pension providers um, our investments and our mortgages so there is ethical banking which means ethical banking, they invest in clean energy, water, recycling, healthcare, education, and housing. And the reason there is ethical banking is because unfortunately there is unethical banking. And unethical banking use our money that we are holding in their accounts um, to then fund or invest in dirty business. Um, so our money, which we are kind of happy with, we're storing it away and hopefully uh, getting interest on, um, is actually unknowingly could be contributing to the fossil fuels industry, to nuclear, to the extraction of coal, there's firearms, deforestation and animal testing. So what can you do? So number one, if you can, and you've got the resources to, would be to switch your bank account. Um, and your providers. And the three here are just three that I can recommend, um, mostly around bank accounts, because that's been my focus most recently. Um, I'm using Starling and Triodos, but, and they are online accounts. But if you're interested in um, one with a high street um, shop, um, there is the Nationwide Building Society. Um, and, nothing, next slide please. <laughs> Okay, so um, if you click the left-hand side, it will play a little video. So this is just a little snippet of um, an ethical bank a bank who has provided this short kind of, 
visual of what unethical and ethical banking is like and what they contribute to. So clean energy, healthcare. Um, so in terms of when it comes to, if you might be thinking, okay, I, w I want to now change um, my pension provider, or I want to find out what my pension provider is doing with my money. Um, with a simple online search, if you Google um, your provider's name and ethical practices, or if you want to look for a new um, provider, you can type in ethical pension providers UK, and it will bring up loads of reports or um, blogs or information and with me as well i do offer a service so if you would like to get in touch we can definitely work together and see if i can find maybe find you some information to help you on that journey um and that is slide seven and that brings us to the end of finances so oh sorry diana that nationwide closed on st john's road um any questions, anybody, before we move on to um, energy, which is coming up next? <clears throat> so if you don't mind, hit the next slide, please. Okay. So when it comes to renewable energy, it is, renewable energy is one of the fastest growing businesses in the world today and it's a source that produces clean energy. Um, renewable energy bypasses the carbon pro problem of fossil fuels um, that is, causes 50% of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So what can we do? So number one, we can have the right energy provider, but we can also be smart with the energy that we are using in our homes and we can be efficient with this. So an energy provider, if they are eco, they will um, not be using energy that comes from fossil fuels. Um, there are actually energy providers. So there is Green Energy UK. However, there is Lava Eco, who are actually ones with space. They're a new energy provider. Um, and I heard about them through uh, Crew Energy London, who is a, um, a charity based here in South West London. We're extremely lucky and they host um, on face-to-face um, -face events now. The most recent I think of, I can think of, was in Tooting Library last month, and they offer you free local advice about your energy. And I believe they actually have an event tomorrow night at 6.30. So it will be definitely one to get involved in if you would like to know more about this subject. So I'm going to tell you how you can um, use your energy consciously. Um, because I am not an energy provider or expert. However, we can obviously all know to switch off and unplug. Um, and I know maybe at night time that we're not going to go around turning off everything, but I can um, recommend to turn off your laptop at night and the things that you will use the next day, like your laptop and your mobile phone. Um, and then if you go away for a longer period of time, your television, um, unplug and your lights, if it's not on a timer or anything. Um, just to get into the habit of unplugging, um, especially yeah, when going away and shutting down that laptop at night. I think lots of us tend to not do it. And I'm trying to really get myself into the habit of doing it. And I'm terrible sometimes when I have loads of tabs open on my laptop. Um, and then it comes to uh, rechargeables and batteries. So um, when you're buying a new electrical item, if it's new, especially to look for one that can take um, a rechargeable USB cord. And if it has to take batteries, to then invest in rechargeable batteries. Um, and when it comes to single use disposable batteries, um, every shop that sells batteries has to um, have a recycling program. So they have to then accept um, batteries to recycle. And batteries should never go in domestic waste because they are full of um, heavy metals and hazardous waste. Um, and that, when I was writing or co-writing the book, was one of the most interesting sections um, about heavy metals in the mining and the importance of when we finish with our old, old mobile phones, for example, to return them and get them recycled. Um, anyway, back to energy. Um, to check your energy rating, so when you are buying a new television or fridge, to try and get right at the top there of your A's and your B's, um, that's yeah, 
when we were actually shopping for a new television, that was one of the most important things that I was looking for. Um, and then saving energy at home. If you're doing all these um, things consciously, it's going to save you money. Um, for example, if you're not using a tumble dryer, but you're going to use wind power to dry your clothes, that's also a great resource to uh, save yourself some money and energy. Um, and then there are also um, the uh, programs that help you insulate your home to save your, to making sure that your home, when you when you heat it with the with the central heating, that you're keeping it in your home and it's not getting squashed by cold air coming in through the windows, the roof, and the wall. Um, and investing in draft excluders or curtains, for example. Um, and then my final point on energy um, is when typical have a cup of tea as well. So it's not to overboil what you don't need and also um, not to forget about your cup of tea that you promised yourself at four o'clock to actually make it instead of reboiling the water all over again. Um, so I hope that got you thinking about the type of energy that you're using at home and how you're using it. And any question, I'm gonna have a quick look. Oh, great. So they have, so I think the Energy Cafe is part of Crew, who are there every, oh, this Friday, great. Fantastic. Oh, that's you, Amy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Just a reminder as well, if you do want to ask any questions, you don't have to put it in the chat. You can also put your hand up um, and we can answer them that way and you can ask in person, as it were. Um, but we'll also have time for questions at the end if you're busy thinking up good ones. So, yeah. OK, so I just got really confused about the time, but we've still got time. That's good. Um, OK, so next slide, please, Bethany. And we're going to go on to diet. I think diet, it's a hard one. I think um, I, it was one that I've struggled with as well. Um, as a child, I would eat um, three meals consisting of meat um, every single day, um, 20 odd years ago. But now it's, when you've, when you've gone into that, it's a harder transition. So um, when it comes to diet and people, there's a lot of people who say, well, you can't be an environmentalist if you are eating meat. And I would like to absolutely disagree. Um, I think when we went back to the beginning, you don't have to do everything as long as you do something. And I think um, with your diet, it's, it's a process and it's a transition. Some people find it way easier than other people. So if you're finding it harder to transition to a plant-based diet, um, I tell you, it's okay. Um, because there's many things that you can consider when it comes to diet. And it's where your food has come from, where it's grown, is it local, what are its air miles? How was it grown? How was the animal fed? And the how was the animal kept, for example? Um, so where does the food come from? So sometimes our food is, comes from abroad and I would then urge to eat sustainably by eating local produce and then also buy from local businesses. You can try less meat days. There are meatless Mondays, for example, or slowly cut down. If you're also somebody who would eat three meals per day consistent of meat, you can try one meal and then cut it down consistently then. Um, and then eat organic and free range. I also, going back to the local businesses, we have Chadwick's in Ballon, for example, who offer um, organic and free range produce, and they also let their customers take in um, reusable containers. So you are eliminating the use of package packaging there, and then you're also supporting a local business. Um, and then when you've cut out meat every single day from every meal, you might find that you've saved money. And then from saving money, I urge people to eat sustainably by going to support local butchers and eat high quality food. Um, instead of buying meat every single day to fund uh, their taste buds, but then not think about how ethical it would be for the animal, for example. Um, and then online recipes and experience in the kitchen 
get loads of tasty ingredients to mix with and um, I can assure you you'll find some fantastic dishes. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, cross my mind, we'll come back to it. Okay, that brings me on, yes, to food waste. Um, when we are buying food, especially with meat, dairy and fish products, it's really, really important, or products with high uh, miles, to not waste the food. So globally, we waste over 1.3 billion, excuse me, tons of food every single year. So the way we can change this disposal of food waste, for example, especially as we don't have food waste bins in uh, Wandsworth, um, is to know what we've already got in our fridge. And I've seen a really uh, tricky trick to um, have a bin in your, like a pot, a bin pot in your fridge, which says like, eat me now. So that's your food, which is going to go off the soonest. And it kind of triggers you to eat that first. And before you go shopping, look at your fridge and freezers and your cupboards and cook with what you've already had, what, what you already have and work with bill plans as well. So you're not buying things that you already do have, um, but sorry, you're not going out and buying food that you already do have in your fridge. Um, and then understood, understanding the difference between use by and best before date um, and the sniff test, um, which is always a good one in my house. Um, <laughs> usually by me, um, and then check that your fridge is at the right temperature between zero and five degrees. Um, and then sometimes we do have food waste. And that's where um, earlier a comment came in about too good to go. So we can share, we can freeze um, food waste. Actually, just tonight, I was speaking to a friend um, who, and I told her, hey, you can actually freeze your tomatoes that you grew in the summer. And um, so you can freeze a lot of food. Um, so if you do find that they might be going off, you can put them in there and come back at a later stage. Um, that's actually a trick that I learned from my mother um, with about the tomatoes especially. But there was also loads of food sharing and saving organisations. So Oddbox is actually, they're based in Ballas or they come from Ballas um, and they deliver one key fruit and vegetables to your door. There's also Sherry Gap, such as Olio, um, which we came to earlier, we came um, we came across earlier, excuse me. Um, and then there's also the two apps, Too Good To Go and Karma, which are business based. Um, and businesses list their foods that they haven't sold throughout the day onto the app and you buy it at, at a reduced cost. Um, so they are really great apps to have on your phone, which I can highly recommend. And that takes us now on to the next slide. Oh yeah, and the food waste. Yeah, we found out about that yesterday at the um, home compost um, talk that was on yesterday. Mm. So hopefully everybody does fantastic with their food waste bin in Southfields and then it ro gets rolled out across the borough. There's fingers crossed to that. <laughs> um, so don't waste food, but also don't waste water. So water was coming back to refill. So the logo that you're seeing here is part of refill which um, earlier in, in the talk, I told you that was the one of the first um, hands-on maybe uh, campaign work that I got involved in at the beginning. Um, so talking about water and why we shouldn't waste water is because we have this amount of water on the earth, which gets recycled. It basically goes in one end and out the other. Um, and that gets recycled around the world all the time. However, what's happening is the population is going up, but the water is staying like this. And that's why water is such a pre precious resource that we must fight to conserve. And that's why we have to be really, really smart with how we're using water. Um, when I came across refill and then write in the section about water in the book, it really hit, hit me when I read that 785 million people around the world don't have access to clean drinking water. But in our country, we can turn on our taps and we have access freely flowing of water. Um, and that's why the conservation is so important of water, especially because it's 
water is also our demand of certain products, meat products and uh, nuts and fruits. They are so uh, water intensive that countries are now limiting the water to grow such food and not giving that water to people who need it for basic human survival. Um, there is a show on Netflix, which I highly, highly re recommend watching. It's called Rotten, and there's one about avocados. Um, and I would highly recommend watching that and talking about how precious water is. So what can we do? So obviously don't leave the tap running um, when you're brushing your teeth and try and have shorter showers instead of a bath especially daily. Um, and also you can get a bottle of water which you turn upside down, no, all the way up, excuse me, um, and pop it in the back of your toilet as well. And then that, that reduces the amount of water used per flush. And then when it comes to your garden as well, there's a lot of, there's a few things that you can do when it comes to water. Um, first of all, we can use the hose less, or you can also get a water bar um, and then use that water first before using the water that comes out of your hose. Um, a great one also is that you can use your cooking water of your vegetables. Um, as long as it's not salted, you can use that on, on your plants. And that's nutrient rich, it's full of nutrients, so the plants will love it too. And then um, how we wash our clothes as well. Um, Try not to wash all the time, all your clothes. Be conscious about how you're wearing it and how you're washing um, and try and do bigger loads as well at one time, I would recommend. Um, also, when it comes to water, the I said about food, but also clothes are, um, clothes especially take a lot of water. Everything has water to be produced. To be produced, it takes a lot of water, excuse me. Um, but coming from the fashion industry, especially um, the dyes of fashion, of clothing are polluting people's drinking water. Um, so not only are we taking water away from them to grow crops or to feed animals, but our practices and the, the way things are being produced and manufactured are polluting waters um, that people rely on to drink. Um, yeah. That is the end of water, and I feel like we do have some messages. Oh, boiled eggs is very good for the garden too. Yes, fantastic. Um, next slide, please, Stephanie. We're going on to getting around. So the way we travel can reduce our carbon footprint. Um, so I've kind of ranked these now. So the light green, um, I did that purposely, and then the slightly darker green, and then the black. Um, so if you are able-bodied and you can, or you don't have loads of stuff to take with you one day, you can um, get around on foot or bike. Um, and then the next best ways would be train, tube, bus, and obviously we've got the Thames boat as well. Um, don't see us completely sailing through the whole of Wandsworth on a boat, but definitely through the Thames, we can use our oyster cop, uh, for example. And then the most... Uh, intensive way of traveling um, would be via car or flying, especially if it's burning uh, petrol or diesel. However, we understand that sometimes you can't just use your bike. You may have loads of things to carry with you. You may not be able-bodied. You may have two children and it's just not um, going to be uh, feasible and that's okay. And that's when you can go to the next section and the next section. And if you've got a car, you could um, start car sharing or hire a car as well if you think okay I don't need a car but I might need it for some time instead of thinking okay maybe I should buy one and it's going to sit outside for ages there are schemes now that you can hire a car um, like zip car for example um, and that's okay and then also yesterday we had a talk yesterday from the Friends of Wanted Common with Sally and she was talking a lot about hybrid cars so there are new um, options now that people can have when it comes to drying, driving. Um, and if you do have a car, or if you are looking to buy a car, there are um, options to buy second-hand cars. Um, and for the past year and a half, I ditched my car and I've been on bike. Um, oh, have somebody, somebody's unmuted. No? 
Um, and I can't believe I didn't do it soon enough, but there we go. And now I'm on bike absolutely everywhere and I highly recommend it and give it a try if you can. Um, I think the ones that ones that actually give free um, bike train, um, like learning skills. Maybe Amy's going to write that in the chat. <laughs> but, yeah, um, we do. I, yeah, I try to um, get my mum on one of those. She's still here and she's listening. Um, don't know if she might have put something in the chat. Um, but the problem is sometimes people say, okay, yeah, that's great. I could take the train to Brighton, for example. However, the train tickets are so much more expensive than what it would cost if I just took my car. And that's the problem. I think that comes at like government and regulation level to keep try and keep the prices down to make it more attractive. Um, and soon we'll come on to that in terms of we can use our voting powers and our consumer powers to vote for like better changes in the government to keep those prices down to make using public transport more attractive. Because where people could say, I've heard it a lot with especially student time, um, people would say that it was actually more expensive to take the train so I'll just take the car and that's not attractive and I think a lot of people won't use that mode of transport um, but what is clear especially what we saw last year during lockdown is that we can clear the air of pollution um, so if we did use public transport way more then our pollution levels will um, drop and there will be a, a completely reduced contribution to the climate uh, climate em emergency especially from fuel um, coming on to the airplanes as well so flying um, especially during pandemic we also saw that meetings people flying abroad for meetings work meetings just didn't need to happen we've got this new invention which was zoom that we all started to hear about and teams and online events and it worked um, and so if you would like to travel and see the world, but your, your, your company is telling you, okay, but I want you flying here every single month for a meeting. You can say, no, like I don't want to, it's too much um, eaten into my carbon footprint. And then you can also offset by planting trees. There's um, the Woodland Trust is the great one that we can support a local um, tree plant, um, tree, they offer tree planting. Um, but also, uh, Hindus and Sectus, for example, I was trying to find the um, the exact percentage earlier about how many Sectus and um, Hindus are um, done abroad, which also could be done in the UK. And that is a lot of carbon just for a weekend away uh, to have a jolly, to be honest. Um, but that's in the book, so I'm sorry, but we'll have to uh, not give a spoiler alert for that percentage. Um, I see a few messages. Oh, a lot of messages. Okay. How can people who are driving help make it easier for other people to walk and cycle? About half of ones of households don't have a car or van. How can people who are driving make it easier for other people to walk or cycle? Okay. Susie, an answer to your question. So as a fast driver, I can still drive and I'm a keen um, cycler now. I think when, when I read a lot online, especially about cyclists, um, people who are driving just realize that it's a person on a bike um, and to be aware of that person. A lot of um, road users in the cars think that um, cyclists should pay road tax or be, have insurance, and I completely agree. I would definitely have uh, insurance as a cyclist. I would way prefer that as well. Um, and I think that kind of anger towards cyclists because drivers think that we've got ownership or we think we've got ownership of the road. If we did just pay insurance, hopefully that kind of marries the relationship and then everyone can be happy. Um, I know there's been a lot of upset about the cycle, cycle lanes, um, but I think they're great because I use them. <laughs> so maybe I'm biased. Um, but that is getting around and we can go to the next slide, please. 
So just thinking about, okay, what can you do? And this was maybe a little added bonus extra of the, the R's, the five R's. So especially when it comes to buying new things, sometimes when we don't buy them, we are given them, such as bags. If you go to a local shop now, you may receive a plastic bag without thinking or a takeaway, for example. Um, you might receive loads of plastic in a takeaway and it may come in a plastic bag as well. Um, how can we refuse those? And a lot of that single use plastic comes, I will go a lot into it in the refill talk on Thursday. Um, but then there's also freebies um, that people give you along the street or in a bag or in the shop and they want to try and give you something for free um, in hotel toiletries, for example. Um, and it's just kind of getting into the habit of saying, no, thank you. Like, I don't really want that. It's OK. I'll leave that there or oh. um, getting into that habit. Um, and then how can we reduce? So I'll reduce for the need to buy new things. Um, and then we reuse. So that maybe would be covered in the second hand as well. section. Um, how we can borrow and share items. We've got the library of things that um, opened up in Merton. And there's also one in Crystal Palace. So if you needed maybe like a store for the weekend or something, something that you don't usually have all the time, you can go and borrow them. So exactly like a book library um, works, you can now borrow um, things such as uh, tour. <laughs> um, not that I've been borrowing tours uh, recently. And then we've got obviously the repair cafe as well, which um, pops up in Tooting. Um, and then the next R is what? So composting, which if you didn't tune in yesterday evening to the home compost, um, highly recommend it. And it was recorded, so you'll be able to catch up on that. Um, and then recycle. So recycle is the last one because recycle can't be the answer. Um, and that's because the recycling system is broke, broken, excuse me, um, especially with plastic. So some items are, can be recycled forever. But plastic, um, it may come to us as a surprise, but can only be recycled two to three times. Um, and although a product might be labelled as made from recycled materials or recyclable, what happens in the process of recycling plastic is that it becomes brittle. Um, and once it's been recycled a few times, it's actually deemed as bad quality. It gets sent to the landfill or gets sent um, to incineration. Um, and so that's why the four above are so important to try and reduce the need for just recycle. Um, so in terms of reduce, reuse, and I'll add another one in, refill. Um, we'll completely delve into that deeper from Thursday's session. So please do come along, I'll hop off it. Um, and then the next slide, please, Stephanie. Oh, I forgot if we had any questions. I agree with you about drivers. Okay, we're going back for a moment to the travel section. Mm. Okay, the household insurance policy. Okay, so Susie's just saying that um, she agrees about the dehuman yeah, you'll have to say the word um, cyclist, but not your comment, not my comment about the insurance and vehicle. Um, excise DP. Most cyclists will be already covered by household insurance policy for third party cover. I'll have to check if I am. Um, cycle to one most of those. Great. Um, okay, so upon reflection, so here's a photo of me back um, at one of the climate strikes here. So we need to, we, by doing everything that we've been speaking about and making small changes which have big impact, this is the thing, small changes big impact. Um, we vote for the kind of world that we want to live on. So if you take on some of my suggestions, we can create extra pressure to these big company, companies to be socially and environmentally responsible. So by changing your bank account, for example, or not buying that joke present um, to your, for your colleague who's leaving, but buying maybe something that's more, um, could be more loved um, or more sustainably made. Um, that speaks volumes in terms of how you spend your money and what you're voting on. Again, if there's no demand, there's no product. Um, okay, and then if we use our buying uh, powers and our social media, we can change. We can demand change. 
Um, and we can also call out companies when they get it wrong. So for example, when I said it about earlier, if you don't agree with um, a company, you can write to them, can voice it on social media or tell your peers um, and tell them that you don't like it and you want to continue supporting them or you like that product, but you just don't like a certain aspect and that they should change. So you voice how you feel and you cast your own vote then. So we have the choice and we have the power to choose how we spend our money and who we give it to. And in turn, we are creating a bigger market for those products. So in terms of, for example, um, one product, a sustainable product especially, are more expensive than a conventional product. Take example, a washing up sponge in the sink. You can get it um, made from plastic or you can get it made from plants. And unfortunately, the plants do come at a higher price tag. But in time, if there is more demand, the price hopefully can bring it down. And if enough people are using their buying powers to demand vote for change in that way, hopefully that will be able to shift that um, difference in price. Um, and the next slide, please. And just something to finish on and to think about that convenience at the expense of the environment is not convenience at all. And the next slide to finish. And these are just my contact details if you did want to um, connect. And I call it Greener Together with Amy because together I believe that we can be greener. But at the start of my journey, I wish I had somebody on that journey with me that I could speak with and learn from. Because as I was just saying in the slide before, sometimes you make all these sustainable swaps and you think you're doing the right thing by buying these oh, eco-friendly products or plastic-free products. And then you have to go through a, a lot before you find your best ones. So Greener Together, I think is good if you have somebody on that journey with you. However, it's not about products that you are the plastic-free swaps that you're making, but I think there are bigger ones that we've covered in this presentation this evening that have bigger effects, so smaller, easier things which have a way bigger effect um, about our, on our carbon footprint. Um, and Susie has also just written in the chat, it would be great if one's of the libraries accepted electrical items for recycling. Where did I see something today? I'll have to come back and think about it again. No, I agree. But we're, we are fortunate to have the, um, the repair cafe. So sometimes our electrical items just need like a tiny bit of uh, fixing and then you've got it working again. But I think it's um, the skills and the knowledge um, and the help to so the repair cafe really is great to um, go along with some broken electricals because I'm guaranteed there'll be somebody there who can help you fix it and also give you the confidence to try and fix it something else in the future. So. And that's the end of my presentation. I hope it was great and everybody really enjoyed it and I see some friendly faces on Thursday evening. It would be really great. Um, yeah, They're great. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, we've got nine minutes, so I think that's time for maybe one or two questions if anyone's got any. Um, but while you're thinking of them, I just thought it would be quite useful or at least this is what I think is useful, um, to summarise the main takeaway that I've taken from your session. And I think that's that so many of the things we do are kind of automatic or they're the easiest choice. Um, and for many people, they don't have a lot of time or space to think about alternatives. But if you do have that time and space, it's really useful to take that time and make some more conscious choices in your life. Um, and those will will help the planet. So I guess that's kind of... Yeah, my, my personal reflection on what you said. Um, and just having a little look in the attendee list. I can't see anyone with their hand up. Um, I just but, agree with what you said, though, Bethany, okay. about um, people. some people don't have the time. And um, sometimes to maybe shop down in the market at the refill shop in Tooting um, takes a lot of time. It might be another place to go to. But if there was this more um, demand for um, certain items or certain ways or doing things. So there's also um, the one in Ballon and Clapham Junction, for example, and Putney just recently opened. So we can see there is that demand um, there in refill shopping that more refill shops are now popping up in our local area. So um, hopefully in time, um, if you don't have time, they all, they'll be able to actually come to you, to come to the buyer. 
So yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. Great. Oh, one question from the audience. <laughs> oh, thank you. Amy just dropped in um, Thursday's uh, link. Oh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we would really encourage you to, to come along to Amy's event on Thursday evening um, and any of the other events that we've got running. Um, and we will have the Battersea Arts Centre event on Saturday. Um, so that's running all day at Battersea Arts Centre and we'll have lots of great stalls happening there for you to come along. Um, Diane, I can see you've put your camera on. Are you asking a question or are you just, just here to say that's fine? <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, but we've got a question in the chat um, from Diana Furlong. So how can we deal with the mass of packaging on products? Um, should we start a campaign, hashtag send it back to drive the point to manufacturers, which will change their packaging? Yeah, I've heard of uh, people who are wrapped the packaging in the supermarket. Um, but I think at that point, it's... Um, the staff who are potentially working in the supermarkets, maybe it's it's just not what they've signed up to when they uh, signed up to work as a shop assistant, for example. And unfortunately, it might just get disposed of anyway and kind of spoken to uh, um, uh, to like a blank wall, for example. However, there are like um, organised events when people do this, and I think that has bigger impact. And I think when people come together and voice what they um, they want to see, what change that they want to see, we have a bigger impact there as well. Um, to call companies out, a uh, said friend who I was speaking to earlier this evening is a great person on Twitter who always complains about um, extra packaging on products. Um, but we are seeing companies who are saying that they are dealing with the with the over packaging of products, for example, um, that they are packaging less. But also, um, Sainsbury's, um, Sainsbury's, for example, in Tootin Broadway, they um, have put up, put out this big bin of accepting all the plastics. But the, my view on that is, well, if they didn't wrap it all up in plastic anyway and give it to us, then we wouldn't have to feel guilty about ooh, like pushing it through the plastic bin in the first place. So they kind of are like pulling the curtain across without like actually solving the issue. Um, there are other reasons that um, products are packaged to try and keep things um, uh, lasting longer. But especially with refill, I actually did another video, um, which is on my YouTube channel about uh, packaging. Um, and I took to Tooting High Street, you may guess I'm from Tooting. Um, so I took to the high street and I videoed around a supermarket. And I would say about 95% was in packaging. And um, yeah, I, there, there is actually a figure. I think it's like 80% of household waste is unrecyclable packaging or is just packaging. Um, so that's 80% of the packaging that we uh, to bring into our home. Um, so what can we do? I think to try, if you can, if you're in a, um, in a position to try and buy unpackaged where you can, maybe there's a smaller um, local grocery store as well, um, where you can buy, like take your own uh, produce bag, for example, and only buy what you need. And then that reduces waste as well. Um, so yeah, by not buying it and just refusing it. But when it comes to also about waste as well, sometimes it's that, okay, if something is reduced with a uh, use by date or something is loose, would that product then go into the bin? Um, if you didn't buy it because of the date being expired, um, me, I would buy that product, although it's packaged, then the fresh product because I worry about food waste. So um, yeah. Yeah. Else. And I feel like we've got another question. Lots of considerations in, in every decision. Yeah, um, we do. We have a question from Emily um, and she says, I have started thinking about Christmas presents and wondered if you have any suggestions of how to have the most sustainable Christmas possible. Um, I do actually have a blog coming out, which I did with a um, uh, just a contact about how to have a sustainable Christmas. So if you did sign up um, to any of my social medias, I don't know if you're if you're on social media, um, I will ping that out over Christmas time. Um, but last Christmas, it was all about shopping local, shop well, shop independent. Um, and I think after through like the lockdowns, loads of local businesses started to pop up. Um, and all of a sudden there's all these local businesses who are delivering to your door, um, and that was really great. And I think to think about how we're buying, 
where it's come from, who's made it, who's produced the uh, ingredients to make it, to think about all of that um, before buying new. But if you are buying new, to try and buy from um, small local people. Um, and also buy from charity shops, try and um, source secondhand items. Um, that's items as well, but then on the table, you can try to um, reduce the meat on the fish and the dairy products. You can um, maybe invest in a nut roast, for example, or um, bulk it out with vegetables. Um, and then it also comes to the packaging. So getting rid of the glitter, which is plastic, microplastic, getting rid of the metallic, which is also plastic. Um, and a lot of supermarkets are actually saying, like, for example, uh, Waitrose and Marks Spencer's, that they're no longer offering glittery, shiny things um, in their Christmas collection. Um, so also how you're wrapping presents, uh, maybe invest in paper tape instead of um, plastic tape, the see-through tape, which is plastic. And when you do have plastic tape, that should actually come off the paper before you recycle. Glitter and metallic uh, recycling uh, paper does not, not belong in the recycling bin in ones with cancel. I believe, and neither does tissue paper. So to avoid all that confusion, you can wrap in pure paper. I, um, with online deliveries that I get, um, they a lot comes it wrapped in paper. Just keep it and reuse it. Um, share it if you get loads, share it out to everybody that you know. Um, and there's also fabric. So I'm part of the um, Tooting Work and Play wrap store. And if you haven't been, please go. Um, it is just a creators and makers paradise. And they're also gonna be there on Saturday, huh? Yeah. At, that, at the art center. Um, so I get fabric from there and I wrap the gifts in fabric. Um, it's actually a Japanese tradition, which you wrap in a scarf and actually uh, gift the scarf as well. Um, which I was told when I asked my friend's mum for the scarf back, and she said, no, you're meant to give that to me. Well, it wasn't part of the deal. Um, so yeah, fabric and then tie it up. And I think it looks beautiful. You can also decorate with um, things that you find on walks or in the park, for example. So they've dropped off the trees and decorate that way. Um, I hope I've given you some ideas, Emily. Um, if not, do come back because Christmas is definitely going to be coming up on my socials very soon. Um, yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. I think one of the other things that often comes up around Christmas is your choice around Christmas trees, um, which is obviously yeah, always a big right. one. Um, and I think from from my perspective, just me speaking, I think if you've already got a plastic tree, don't throw it out. Um, you've mm -hmm. already bought it. The embedded carbon has already been been used to produce it. Um, but if you're thinking about buying a new one, you can look at other options like um, you can get a tree that you can keep in a pot outside, for example, or there are some tree hire companies as well who look after them during the year and then you can hire them back. And um, so there's a few options there, but don't go throwing out a plastic tree if you already have one. No, it's, actually the scrap, store, the scrap store in Tooting actually had a uh, Christmas tree up for grabs today from me for members. Uh, so if you are a member and you're after a tree, you can definitely check out if it's still available. Um, but with the Christmas tree rental, you have to be really early um, yeah. to get your booking booking in for that. But if you do want a a, a Christmas tree, um, I saw on Facebook many years ago that a lady took an old bed sheet with her. So if the tree was open, instead of putting it in that plastic netting, she wrapped it with the old bread, bread sheet and took it away in that way. Um, but yeah, I completely agree. I think there's lots of um, going back to the sharing platforms, for example, um, Olio and Facebook. Um, there are lots of free cycle uh, groups on Facebook locally as well. There's always Christmas trees on there around this time of the year. So definitely check those out, artificial ones. Um, and something else came up in the chat. Oh, great. That sounds great for the parents of the future. Um, but that one did actually catch me off guard about Christmas, but I did have a, I actually am thinking now I have a little tab on my laptop about everything from the um, blog I did earlier uh, a few months ago. Mm. Great to hear that I gave you some good um, ideas, Emily. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who tuned in and came to the event. Um, great. Yeah. And I hope um, Thursdays will be less of me speaking. Um, so do come along, <laughs> there's more yeah, uh, video and we're hearing from some really great businesses as well around Wandsworth who are um, doing great things in the environment um, from their business to uh, be more sustainable and we'll be hearing from them, so it'll be fantastic, so do come along. Great.
Thank you very much, Amy. Thanks, everybody, for coming along this evening. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. And we will hopefully see you at some of our other events. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.